Good afternoon. My name is Rick Grimm. Uh, I'm a cardiologist and director of the Echocardiography Laboratory here at Cleveland Clinic, and I'm here with one of my partners, Rhonda Miyasaka, who is director of our interventional echocardiography uh, team here at Cleveland Clinic, and we're here to uh, uh, tell you all about the world of uh, echocardiography, which I believe is one of the most uh, important diagnostic procedures in our cardiovascular uh, realm of uh, techniques and, and procedures uh, to date. Uh, echocardiography, for those of you who may not be aware, is a non-invasive uh, test in which we use uh, echo Doppler technology to actually assess heart size, function, uh, valvular disease, valvular regurgitation, narrowings, as well as the hemodynamics uh, and pressures that are uh, generated by the heart to determine and to evaluate for any uh, pathology. Uh, this is something that uh, we do uh, in our laboratory uh, quite often. It's probably the most common uh, uh, diagnostic uh, procedure performed in cardiology today. Uh, other such cardiac tests include electrocardiograms that look at the heart rate and rhythm, as well as on the other end of the spectrum, cardiac catheterization or invasive cardiology techniques that actually look and, and define and examine the arteries that supply the uh, heart muscle itself. An echocardiogram is a test, again, that's completely non-invasive. Literally uh, uh, generate images from the chest wall with an ultrasound probe, and we're able to evaluate and, and diagnose many pathologies uh, in patients that uh, are, are having uh, one ordered as a result of an evaluation, uh, a, uh, an initial examination or evaluation, either by their general family practitioner, internist. Uh, or a cardiologist uh, uh, as well. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Rhonda to uh, talk a little bit more about the uh, evaluation in general as well as the examination itself. Sure. Thanks, Rick. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I, thanks for having me here today. It's, uh, this is one of my favorite topics to talk about is actually uh, echocardiography or ultrasound of the heart. And uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, we'd like to make sure that we talk about are some of the common questions that we get from patients. So when your doctor orders an echo, uh, why do they order the echo? Why do you need an echo? Um, some very common reasons why your doctor may have ordered an echo uh, would be maybe you reported a symptom that you were having, uh, perhaps some chest discomfort or shortness of breath, and your doctor wants to make sure that everything looks okay with your heart. Um, perhaps they noticed an abnormal sound when they listened to your chest, like a murmur. An, echocardio an echocardiogram is very good at trying to understand the reason why you may have a murmur. Um, or maybe they or ordered it because they found another test that looked abnormal, like a blood test or a chest x-ray or an EKG. So it's a, a very helpful tool to be able to uh, understand how your heart's doing. From an echo, we can get a lot of really great information. We can understand your heart size. We can understand your heart function. We get a detailed look at all of the valves. We can make sure they're opening okay, they're closing okay. We can do measurements. And so it's a really, really valuable tool uh, that we have in cardiology. Rick, maybe uh, to kind of bring things back over to you, what should our patients expect? You know, you've ordered an echo in clinic and they come to the check-in desk. What is an echo like for them? Who does it? How long does it take? Uh, are there any risks that they have to worry about? Right. Well, the beauty of this technology is that, again, it is non-invasive. Uh, there are virtually, there, there are no risks uh, to the procedure itself. It literally is a test where an ultrasound probe <clears throat> uh, which is about the size of a microphone, uh, is actually applied to the chest wall with a little bit of gel, and images are acquired by a cardiac sonographer. This is a technician that is specifically trained and educated on the acquisition of echocardiographic or ultrasound images uh, from the chest wall. These technicians are extremely highly knowledgeable, highly skilled, uh, and 
are uh, very, very, very well trained. Uh, and especially at a, at a place like the Cleveland Clinic in our laboratory where we see a, a tremendous amount of pathology and certainly a large number of patients and these sonographers as a result of uh, performing uh, large volumes of studies are, are outstanding at what they do in terms of acquiring images. Once these images are acquired, and usually this test takes approximately 45 minutes to conduct, sometimes a little less if uh, there are no abnormalities whatsoever, sometimes a little longer if we find uh, particular areas uh, of interest or concern. Uh, and, and certainly this technique is very much impacted uh, by a variety of things, such as a, a patient's uh, uh, size, for example. Uh, ultrasound uh, does not, uh, uh, is, is a, a waveform that uh, is, has a difficulty penetrating uh, through uh, large masses, so uh, large body sizes tend to be challenging uh, for us, and that may take a little longer in terms of that interrogation. Uh, but in any case, uh, and even though this is a non-invasive procedure, that seems to uh, signal to many uh, of the non-inclined uh, 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 th that uh, it's, it's not a very uh, uh, high expertise-like uh, examination. And counter to that, this technique is actually uh, extremely uh, useful for us and provides us a tremendous amount of information and, and data whenever it's performed. But it can be adversely impacted, again, by technical challenges uh, in patients, uh, again, such as body size and, and actually lung uh, disease, for example, uh, that uh, can be a challenge for us in patients that have significant end-stage lung disease, for, uh, as an example. Um, again, you know, these uh, tests uh, can be applied in, in different uh, environments as, as well. It's extremely portable. We can take it anywhere. We can acquire images in literally uh, seconds and in real time. And as a result, it can be extremely important for us in making diagnoses that may be uh, uh, time sensitive and, and uh and very accurately and, and uh, effectively. So it's a, a, a an seemingly simple technology uh, that has tremendous ramifications and capabilities in terms of being extremely powerful in its ability to make the diagnosis of uh, significant disease. Maybe something else to comment on as well. Um, you know, patients are always worried. Uh, are, is there anything I have to worry about? You know, during the test or the procedure, am I going to need an IV? Do I need blood work? Um, maybe we can help just alleviate some of those concerns as well. Um, the uh, most echoes. You know, we don't have to do any particular blood work for screening. There really aren't any uh, major risks to it. Um, sometimes we do end up using uh, needing to use an IV. Um, and that is uh, for some more specialized types of imaging. Uh, maybe you could talk about the situations where we do things like a, a bubble study and what that means if a, if a patient says we need to do one of those, or uh, echo contrast and, and what sure. that means, because sure. the word contrast sometimes right. has some connotations right. for people. Well, just as in other uh, radiologic procedures where a contrast agent may be utilized to enhance certain features of that test, uh, the same is true with echocardiography, although the contrast uh, 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 that is utilized is very different from the uh, iodine-directed uh, uh, dye that's used, for example, in radiologic circles with CAT scans, for an example. Our contrast agent are really comprised of bubbles, small microscopic uh, bubbles that actually can enhance the ultrasound image. Uh, additionally, we can use and in, in, inject these, uh, uh, what we refer to as agitated saline, which is very harmless uh, and can be injected, but also enhances the ultrasound signals and can in fact allow us to detect and identify shunts in the heart. Uh, when communications exist between the left and the right side of the heart, 
that shouldn't under normal in, uh, circumstances. So we do have other techniques and it can be used in other scenarios as well, such as stress testing. We utilize it to evaluate the heart function before and after stress testing. And then we have another capability that is particularly uh, 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 advanced and that is our transesophageal echocardiographic exam where we uh, have an ultrasound probe on the end of an endoscope that we can actually insert into the food pipe just like an endoscopy and take exquisite images of the heart uh, literally because the probe is sitting right in the esophagus, right adjacent to the heart, uh, behind the heart. And maybe Rhonda can tell us a little more about that capability, which is really just booming and a tremendous capability for us as well. Sure, absolutely. Um, so what uh, what Rick was talking about is a test that we call a transesophageal echo, or TEE. And it's the same type of technology in that it uses ultrasound to get really nice pictures of the heart. But the benefit is that this test is actually done as a procedure, uh, meaning that we give some sedation and some numbing to the throat to make sure that our patients are nice and comfortable. And then we just very simply advance a small ultrasound probe down the throat so that we can take really close up pictures of the heart. The advantage of a transesophageal echo is that our image quality is absolutely pristine. And so sometimes, uh, once we get the regular type of transthoracic echo, or the type we've already talked about, where we have the wand that we wave on the outside of the chest, uh, a transesophageal echo can give us much finer details, particularly if we under, need to understand uh, issues or problems with valves. Um, that's one of the main uh, reasons why we would do a transesophageal echo is to get really nice pictures of your valve. So your heart has four different valves. And on TEE, we can get very crisp images. We can understand what the leaflets look like. We can understand how will they open, how will they close. We can see if there are areas of leakiness or areas of narrowing. And the technology these days is absolutely amazing because we now have the ability to, in addition to getting our, our regular um, echo views, we can actually generate three-dimensional images. So three-dimensional images of the heart, three-dimensional images of the valves, and we can rotate the valves and make them look almost like a surgeon would be looking them as if, uh, you know, as if they were able to look right into your chest. And so it gives us a really great understanding of what the valves look like, and it helps us understand um, if you might need a treatment for those valves, whether that be a medication or a procedure or surgery. Um, another reason that we do a transesophageal echo for, you know, those of our patients that have uh, heart rhythm abnormalities like atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter, uh, sometimes we'll do a transesophageal echo to look at the heart closely and make sure there are no blood clots before a procedure called um, a, a cardioversion or a shock treatment. And so it's a, a test, again, that we do, um, you know, very commonly here, um, but it, uh, it gives us really nice information and it's very complementary to the uh, regular echo that you probably had beforehand. How about maybe uh, some questions that uh, patients ask me all the time. You know, we see a lot of patients that have had echoes in the past. You know, mm -hmm. they've had an echo close to home and, uh, you know, now they're coming to see us for the first time. And uh, sometimes we say, you know, hey, I know you already had an echo, but we want to do another one. Uh, why, why might we sometimes want to do another echo? Um, and along those lines, as you know, the head of our echo lab, you know, what are some things that you're kind of proud of that, you know, we're able to do here uh, and offer here as part of the, you know, the echo experience? Well, I, I'll take the second question first and thank you for that lead in. But uh, I, I think certainly here at Cleveland Clinic, as I mentioned, we, we do a tremendous volume and it's probably a larger volume than most, most uh, places anywhere. Uh, and as a result of that, uh, again, not only our sonographers, but our professional staff have tremendous experience and, and expertise in, in evaluating uh, the, these cases that often are very, very complex uh, cases. One of the reasons why a patient uh, may need a, a repeated exam is that if an exam was, has been performed uh, uh, elsewhere, uh, there's a possibility that it may, they may have certainly had uh, uh, someone with uh, lesser experience or, or expertise uh, performing an exam. It may not have been on the highest quality uh, equipment 
uh, which makes a tremendous uh, difference in terms of image quality. Uh, and, and oftentimes, uh, the examinations may not be as extensive and, and uh, in-depth. Uh, and there are, there are a lot of capabilities, as I mentioned earlier, that we can do with echocardiography and Doppler echocardiography, where we can make measurements and actually interrogate non-invasively uh, pressures uh, within the heart. And that can give us a tremendous amount of information in and of itself. And we can really perform directed examinations directed to the problem at hand. Uh, and that is not always uh, conducted in a general uh, ultrasound exam. I think in, in most, I, I like to say, and it's, it's very, very true, it's very stark uh, a difference, but in most places that perform echocardiography, I'd say a vast majority maybe 60 to 80% of their examinations are essentially normal exams. Uh, here at the Cleveland Clinic in our laboratory, uh, it's just the opposite. 80% of our examinations are abnormal and have significant pathology. So it's, it's all around us. We're very uh, 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 commonly uh, seeing these, very uh, 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 well aware of the potential of a lot of these. Uh, again, the immediate feedback that we have enable us to act uh, fairly uh, quickly uh, on issues that may require a more urgent uh, evaluation, uh, and we can then refer on to other areas uh, as, as necessary. So, uh, again, an incredibly uh, valuable technique. Okay. You know, the, the uh, uh, other area that uh, I, I think is, is uh, maybe not many may not be as familiar with, uh, is the fact that, as I mentioned, it can be utilized in other circumstances uh, uh, more, more acutely. And, and again, in the hospital environment, you'll see that it's utilized uh, quite frequently uh, on the wards, in the intensive care units, and to guide other procedures. Uh, that's something both in the operating room that it's commonly utilized as well as in the outpatient department, as well as in the cath lab, for example, to guide procedures that can be done less inv invasively. And that's something that Rhonda has been particularly expert in helping our team with uh, here at Cleveland Clinic as well. Uh, but all in all, a remarkable technology. The rest of the world has become familiar with it. So all areas outside of cardiology are now uh, more routinely utilizing this technique. Uh, and it's a wonderful technique to have available uh, in our armamentarium.